saw that in Ramon, it wasn't this. So then he went to another, uh, in another way, just to some modifications, you know, just to, to um, totally renounce the world and all the uh, goods of this world. And that was also a very common way of, of practicing in India at that time. Finally, he almost died. Finally, he almost stro starved himself to death. And then he realized that there's nothing he can achieve. So then he said, no, no, it's not the way. Before, when he was a young, he used to live the life of self-indulgence, right? It was like pleasant life. Then he got another street, and then now I have to go the middle path. Find a way between the self-indulgence and self self-mortification. Then he found a tree which, is tree which is known as a body tree. Sat down there and said, okay, I'm not going to stand up until I will know, will I get the truth about existence I am faced with, uh, truth of, of, the, of, the, of the experience. And what is there in the canon of the 14 days, he got to the point. He found out so-called uh, four noble truths. In Chinese, it's presently in Sanskrit, it's a Chakraya, it's a Yami. And the first truth is about suffering. Uh, Usually, we know the, this, this translation from, from the Sanskrit or from Pali as uh, the life is suffering. But actually, it's not a very correct translation. It's, so, it's the most common one, but there's one uh, person uh, in the source. It's, uh, uh, in, in, there's a school of African and it's like so, a school of uh, Oriental and African Studies in London, uh, Sue Hamilton. And she just made a very interesting like, point on that, that actually the Duha, which we, we used to translate as suffering, does not mean suffering, it means lack of satisfactoriness. Like as she made like a new term, unsatisfactoriness, you know, that we, we have three kinds of experiences, pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. So then the people say, all oh, experiences are, are, are suffering. So the people say, no, 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 pleasant experience, the moment of experience is still present. So it's something wrong, then she may know this is, Unsatisfactory. Yes, we will never get. It doesn't matter how pleasant the experience is. We want to have more. Because if it's unpleasant, we don't want it. If it's pleasant, we want more of that experience. So we'll never get fully satisfied. We want it. So then she offered another translation as an unsatisfactory. And I'm totally in line with her because it explains a lot. It's just. It's not my topic now here to talk about the interpretation of the Buddhist, but it's very, I, I will just give it another concern. And then, second choice is that the suffering has its cause, or its causes, right? It's the truth of the accumulation of suffering. Third is just another, another truth of elimination of suffering. And the fourth is about the path, that there is a path to uh, eliminate, to, to get rid of the suffering. I am supposed to talk about the penal origination. I'm talking about the four novels. Just why? Because actually, see, do I have five minutes? Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, so very, very quickly. Second and third truths are related to the dependent origination because the third, second truth tells you that the suffering is not eternal. Suffering does not come from uh, a God as a punishment or a gift. Right? Suffering or unsatisfactoriness has it's caused it's caused by something. And as long as it's caused by something can be also eradicated. Because if something is eternal, if for example a god punishes you, right? You can do actually anything about that. So if you are Christian, there is a problem between Catholics and Protestants, especially like Calvin or Luther. If we can do anything with the God, God decided to punish us, right? And the most consequent thinker in Christianity, I think, is Calvin, because he, John Calvin, he said, like, Calvin is right, so like, we can do anything, God can decide, because God punished, punished us, and the God can, you know, just say, okay, that's enough. I can, I can, I, I can, I can save you. We can do anything. Calvin said, no, no, we still can do something, right? We can be good guys or something. So, but, in this kind of view, the, something is permanent and something is independent from us. In Buddhist teaching, especially I'm talking about the early Buddhism, you know, from the Nikaya, Pali Nikaya's canon or uh, another Agama, Agama canon which is preserved in Chinese only, 
uh, I'm not talking about the latest things, I'm talking about everything has its causes, it's caused by something. So if the suffering is caused by something, we have to find out what is it caused by, right? So what causes the suffering, what causes our un wrong, unpleasant situation. And if we can make it, we just can go to the third tree, right? That we can eliminate. So if we know the cause, we can deal with that. And sometimes, or usually, many people say that, that, that uh, Buddha's teaching is kind of negative, right? Because they don't like to suffer. But it's totally, I'm totally, I don't totally disagree with that and interpretation because it says, no, no, no. It's, actually, this is the real state of the statement about the life. We have lots of frustrations, right, and many, many disappointments and so on. But this is the truth. They say the life is it's not perfect, actually. It's, there's always a lot of full satisfaction. And there are some, and another point is that there is a reason for that. It happened because it happened due to certain reasons. And as long as it happened to certain reasons, <laughs> we can know those reasons and we can deal with them. And that I think that Buddhism is one of the most positive teachings among the world's religions, and probably much more positive than Christianity, for example, because everything depends on that. Here, yeah, everything depends on you. Actually, it depends on us, because we just have to know. Of course, it's not easy to know the situation, but we can do it. And then he offers it. There is a reason, there is a source of the pain, there is the way to deal with that. Uh, now, we, when we come to this uh, particular samuttada as a law dependent origination or dependent arising, or actually there's another translation as a co arising. So, what, for example, like I have mentioned, that it's like totality, that everything influences everything. This is more like the teaching of Chinese Huayan school, not of uh, early Buddhism. But it, there's that kind of interpretation. The probably most Common interpretation or common like uh, like uh, uh, like uh, exposition of that view is this so-called twelve-fold chain of dependent origination. Uh, this this uh, view is presented as a way we as a, we as a, like a thinking, um, feeling, or experiencing being coming to present. So there are like there are twelve elements, but it does not have to be exactly 12 elements. There are uh, another interpretation for another text which are talking only about five elements, about the nine or about seven. It's not that important. The important is that there are certain reasons and step by step something is, something is like emerging. Right? But again, everything emerges due to certain reasons. So when you look, for example, to the last page, no, it's the second page, I'm sorry. Uh, 